Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today I wanted to give you guys the more like end game ish um, Mana Righteous Fire Hierophant. So today for you guys, um, I have finally I gotten have and crafted a explosion chest. Um, if you guys don't know how to craft the explosion chest, you need an item level 85 Crusader piece. Um, I got lucky with a glorious plate. Also looks really cool if you skid it on a tabula rasa because it's bloody. Um, so basically with harvest crafting, you need to have you need to have your prefix for reflect physical because that's one tag. Then you need to have your physical, well then you won't really have anything else. Then essentially if you lock your suffixes and you have 5% of physical damage as hits taken as lightning, you can guarantee slam, and when I say slam I mean augment with physical, that it guarantees physical. Now this chest piece looks bad, but we're going to be crafting it as we go with harvest. But I just wanted to demonstrate for you guys what this is going to look like. So I'm going to do a real quick map, and then I'm going to talk about some more endgame variants. As I'm in SSF, I'm going to be pulling everything in a browser because I don't have it. So we're just going to run a kind of juiced map. I know YouTube, some of you guys don't think this stuff is juiced because you play the current Path of Exile, but this is moderately juiced with my sextons, okay? We're going to put an infused domination here for six extra shrines. Let us pop it in. The links haven't changed. I'm still running my garbage war staff I found day one. Um, I've got Inspiration, Alley Focus, Righteous Fire, Efficacy, Conk Effect, Burn Damage. And here we go. Probably not the best way to start with an Essence, but it's okay. Alright. Ooh, Brandis for it. Kadiro, I need you! Please give me Cloak of Defiance! Nope. No Kadiro. Oh! Kadiro's over there! Nice! Our garden swells with yes, life. Yes. Thanks for the rain. We're doing a quick YouTube video here. Don't mind me. What do we have? Allow me to turn your coins into something. It's actually like not bad considering I Yeah. Oh, a gloom shrine with a boom shrine? Oh baby, let's just turn on ball RF. Okay. <clears throat> let's just don't mind me, boys, just gonna casually walk through this map real fast. Thanks, Kadiro. What a nice guy, dude. I think size matters. When it comes to Righteous Fire, yes. I must have time to gather my will. Our single target, we are still working on. Um, naturally, I haven't really gotten much gear towards single target yet, as I put in most of my resources to trying to get this boom chest, so that I can farm faster, so that I can work on my single target. So single target is still pretty much the exact same as when you guys saw it previously. Which is mediocre right now. Um, we are going to be working on some more, obviously. So the other thing I want to talk about is we're a bit more defensive now because we now also have a Taste of Hate, which scales off Flask Effect. And Taste of Hate is pretty cool because it also scales uh, the Physical Explosion Boom, which means that whenever a target dies, they take 3% of their life as physical. Well, they distribute 3% of their maximum life as physical damage to other enemies, which then gets buffed by Taste of Hate, which actually means it applies Elemental Equilibrium. So, that's what's pretty nice. Good. Okay. 
Okay, so let's talk about things that you can kind of modify and do to push the character into further endgame. So first off, I want to state that uh, since I cannot get cluster jewels, because this RNG has not been on my side, I have been working on crafting jewels. Um, so I've been crafting maximum life, maximum mana resistance jewels. It would be better if I did life, mana, fire multi, and then I probably chaos resist. But I've been needing dexterity on my build, and since I don't have an Azuri's foible, I really wanted to move away from having to put in dex nodes. So I have currently basically have two dex jewels, and because I'm still working on my chest piece, it's obviously dog shit right now. It's just got a dexterity roll. So <clears throat> I've decided to pull up since I'm, I really hate path of building. I tried to make you guys a path of building, but I'm just, I'm a boomer, man. I'm, I'm not good at using this tool like a lot of you guys use it. I just use it to, to basically just really just like put in my points and that's about it. So I want to talk about some upgrades you can get. So if you decide to use an Indigon, which is best in slot, you will essentially have 10% increased mana, which is okay. Recover 8 to 10% of, of uh, life when you use a Mana Flask. This is not super beneficial, but it's still nice because it gives you a little bit of health. This non-instant Mana Recovery from Flasks is also recovered as life. This turns your Mana Flask into basically like a permanent Life Flask that is healing you instantly that will scale off of Mana Recovery and, I believe, Life Recovery because of the way it converts. Uh, so this allows you to drop a life flask, meaning you can run another utility flask. So you can run a basalt flask with a taste of hate, or you know you can run a witch fire brew. Uh, witch fire brew is really good for clearing because you can just run through and just pop everything instantly. Then the increased mana cost of skill for each 200 total mana spent. This is really should not be too much of an issue because you're not like when you're doing these end game bosses where you need your sustain like uber elder and awakener you don't just like sit still and use scorching ray you have to constantly move around and go to the new location and go to the new location so this should not really be, be an issue a lot of people say they're having trouble it's because they're playing trade league they get level 69 they immediately put on indigon and they don't have any source of sustain so of course it's not really going to work um and then this spell damage is really sick because when you click arcane guard you get basically a 4,000 bubble so that essentially gives you a shit ton of spell damage from indigon Oops. There we go. So, highly recommend Indigon. Very, very, very insane piece of gear. Uh, Cloak of Defiance. So, as you guys just saw with my current chest piece, I'm using a physical explosion wand. Cloak would be ideal for bossing because you get the extra 10% mom, you save a point on the tree, you get 1% regen, which is about 600 mana a second, and you have this one here which is plus the maximum mana, which is pretty massive. Um, so this would be super good. For mapping, if you wanted to, to you could world. technically use a chess piece like I have, but you could get a Shaper Influence chess piece and use an Awakener Orb. I can't really explain how to do this part, but if you have Physical Explosion and you have 10% Mind Over Matter from Shaped Influence, you could have a Physical Explosion chess piece with 10% of damage taken from mana. But in a bossing scenario, you would still probably want to use a cloak. One, because it's more affordable, and two, because the regen is just very, very massive. And having a bit of armor on a chest piece is not really going to make the difference in you dying on a boss fight or not. It's more just for mapping. It helps a little bit with the armor. Azuri's Foible. Uh, very good piece of gear. Um, you can pop your catalyst on it. So the... Let me see the catalyst here. There are the fertile catalysts that increase the quality of life and mana modifiers. For an Adziri's Foible, that would increase... I don't know if it increases the Implicit, but it would increase the the mana, the maximum mana, and the mana regeneration. So this is very, very big. And then this will also help with dex problems. It won't solve the dex problems, but it will help with dex problems. Uh, so this is a very good piece of gear. I still haven't found one. I don't know if I'm going to use one at this point. I probably will. It's just... It's a, bit of it, it's a little bit of a struggle to switch off my current one, since my current one is pretty good. Okay, next up, Cluster Jewels. I want Actually, before Cluster Jewels, I want to talk about a Watcher's Eye. So, um, Watcher's Eye is something I don't really have access to because it's complete RNG. And since we're only running one Aura Malevolence, it makes it pretty easy. 22% damage over time multiplier with Malevolence is nuts. This is crazy. If you want an example of how strong this is, on Jewels, you can only roll up to 4% fire damage over time multiplier. 
That rolls 22%. This whole entire wheel, 10% fire multiplier, 4% fire multiplier, 4% fire multiplier. Literally, that one jewel gives more damage than the Breath of Flames cluster from the fire damage over time multiplier. Um, so that's something that's very valuable to us in terms of damage. Being unaffected by bleeding allows you to free up a flash slot, which is fantastic. Um, being unaffected by poison is also fantastic because you don't have to worry about getting poisoned. Then you also can get increased recovery rate of life and energy shield. You would think this isn't very good because it doesn't say mana. However, agnostic actually scales off of your life recovery. Mana recovery does not affect agnostic because agnostic states it sacrifices 20% of your mana to recover, keyword recover, that much life. Mana recovery means you regen more mana to prevent agnostic from draining your mana, but life recovery will scale the amount healed by a multiplier, whereas maximum mana adds to that. So that's kind of two ways to think of it. It's not the most important stat, but it is still something usable if you have it. Um, I believe also with Indigon, life recovery would work, I think, but I haven't used an Indigon, so I'm not sure. You still want to stack mana recovery. You don't really want to go out of your way for life recovery. I'm just saying that it is a usable stat if it happens to be there. Um, this does not help us. The damaging ailments, this is pretty much useless for us. So next up, I want to talk about cluster jewels. So the position for your cluster jewels would be located here. And the main majority of the cluster jewels is you're basically going to be removing two point jewels. Um, probably a three point jewel if you have it here. Three point jewel here. I just dropped my profane chemistry, although profane chemistry is still really good for me because of the flask effect. I dropped it only because at this moment in time, I d actually would have too much life and I, I want it to be around 4.3 to 4.5 and I was up like 4.7. So, and, and since I can't get mana on this chest piece, I needed to kind of respect my stuff. So the best thing to drop four cluster jewels are, are like I said, are going to be jewels and they're probably going to be um, if you can find a way to drop on Wavering Stance with Trade League gear, you could potentially save 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. This is pretty massive. I don't know. I haven't really thought of a way to do it. But you're also going to drop like the 10% mana nodes. And then this cluster here is not super important. It's still good. Now, and then of course here I would drop like mana and life and this. Now, for this here, for the cluster jewels, I've went ahead and shown essentially two different cluster jewels i'd recommend uh, i didn't take a look at large because large would just be so game changing to this build i feel like it wouldn't really be the same so we're going to be focusing on medium and we're going to be focusing on small so in small or sorry in medium we're going to be looking at fire damage over time multiplier as that's our multiplier and this is our strongest source of damage and if you're going into cluster jewels you want it to give you something you can't normally get and since fire multi is a bit far away from us this is where we would get it Unfortunately, there's not that much, like, very good in here. Um, so let's just go down them. This does not really help you. We don't really care about it. Master of Fire. Nearby enemies have fire exposure. The only reason I would use this is for clear speed, because it would mean enemies around you have minus 10 fire res. But once you get some cast speed, you can keep fire exposure up at a 25% value um, with Scorching Ray. So this is not really that important, but it is pretty decent. It, it would go up in like an hour, Ozzy, after I'm done. This you don't want. Uh, Cremator is not very good. Blowback's not very good. Uh, fan, you don't need. Cooked Alive, you don't really need. The only time you'd use Cooked Alive is if you're going for a more damage variant. I believe you can use Stormfire. Um, I like to save my MTX here, you know, extra space. I believe you could use Stormfire to make it so that your lightning damage could ignite, which means you could still use Orb of Storms. You could pick up Shock Chance. You could then use combustion with your orb of storms to apply the minus fire res and then get an additional minus 10 fire res from that but i don't really want to do that that i'm not really interested in doing that just for people who like numbers that would be an option for you okay so continuing on this is where you would want i think burning bright would be your ideal node because it's eight percent fire multi 20 percent increase and the 8% AoE is all right. It does scale your explosion. It scales your RF, scales your Vol RF. So that's good. The other one I'd recommend would be, we don't need Cover of Ash, a Cover and Ash. That's where our Infernal Cry is. Um, this is an increase. You want a multiplier. You don't want increased damage with ailments. 
Nope. Um, this is okay. No, that's shit. You don't want that. Exposure therapy. This is probably the only other one that I would recommend if you're looking for damage. It's a lot easier to roll than, I think, is it Wrapped in Flame? No, Burning Bright? Yeah. Um, exposure Therapy gives 10% damage over time multi, whereas Burning Bright gives 8%, but also gives the extra AoE and gives the increased fire damage. This is good because of the Chaos Resist against damage over time, and it's two times easier to roll. So if you get a usable jewel with Exposure Therapy, keep it. I know it looks weird because it's not fire, but it's good. So, Brush with Death is also okay. It's 10% to damage over time multiplier, but Exposure Therapy gives the Chaos Res. You don't really need the Recover. Like, the Recover doesn't help, and the value to roll it is, like, really low anyway. Uh, this doesn't really help. Uh, in that's increase. You don't really want it. Brood for Potency is another okay option, but it is not a multiplier. But it does help you with Flash Sustain, so it's usable, but it's not really what I would aim towards. Uh, and then you don't want Student of Decay. Then for your small cluster, uh, I opted out to take increased maximum mana because you're probably going to sacrifice mana notes to get it. So, we've got Eldritch Inspiration, and you're fine, Ozzy. Don't worry about it, dude. He's ignore Dab. Don't worry about it. He, he missed. Don't worry. All right. So this does this is at, uh, this doesn't help you. Okay. Careful handling. Nope. Mindfulness. This is okay, but you're not really going to be stationary. So. Don't worry about that. Um, this is okay because it's mana with mana recovery from flasks, but, but I don't think you need more regeneration. I think it's better to have more maximum mana. I feel like after a point, you're going to have so much sustain. You don't really have to worry as much about the mana recovery. It's more about having more max mana. So that's why I personally recommended Opinus because it's 30 flat mana which is going to be like 120 to 200 flat mana. And then you get the 20% increase, and it's super easy to roll. So then we've got Daring Ideas doesn't really help. Clarity of Purpose is okay, but again, that's a regen. I would much rather have the flat. Um, this one is doesn't really matter. Holistic Health is okay, but you shouldn't really necessarily need the maximum life. Uh, Genius is okay, but you shouldn't really need it. It's okay stubborn student is stubborn student is another interesting option only because of the amount of armor you get uh, and we'll go into this a little bit later but i don't think it's desirable but i think it's okay will of shaper not really needed wizardry not needed sage not needed blessed is okay mainly because i really like chaos res and i'm a big fan of chaos res so if you if you feel like you have negative 40 chaos res it's not a bad option. So that pretty much covers clusters. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is the Thread of Hope location. Previously, I had Thread of Hope located over here. And my Thread of Hope, I believe, hit Breath of Flames. I also took Fire Damage and Burning Damage Multiplier. Um, I believe I took Snow Forge. And then I don't remember the last node, but it wasn't super important. I have opted out to move my Thread of Hope over here. Now, by moving it here, I actually was able to respect the pathing. I use one extra skill point and lose dex, but you gain like 50 something percent increase. So that helps offset losing Breath of Flames. Then, oh, the int one. Yes, thank you. We had utmost intellect. Then by moving it here, you get something really cool. You get Arcane Capacitor, which gives you more mana than the int node, and it gives you more regeneration because it increases your Arcane Surge effect. I've also opted out, and just because I have extra points right now, I have the extra Arcane Surge effect. Ideally, I would remove this and this node for a jewel, but I have to craft a new jewel right now. Uh, and then we already said you get Divine Judgment. But the cool one, the interesting one, is Sanctum of Thought, which is you take 20% reduced extra damage from crit, and you get extra armor. That little bit of armor scaling will work if you have every piece of gear as armor, and you take the uh, Cluster Jewel we were just talking about, with getting flat armor per um, per reserved per unreserved mana, it's not really that important. But if you can find a way to scale a ton of armor, that would be your option. Now, for your belt, um, previously, if you guys saw, I was talking about rolling mana recovery on a belt, which is really important. Mine has life mana, dual res, mana recovery, flask effect. I'm actually trying to roll a better one now. It's in the works. So I've got a leather belt base, and I have a tier one 
reduced extra damage from crits. Meaning with that note on the tree, plus this belt that also has the mana recovery, I could have minus 50% critical damage taken, which I believe voids all monster critical strike unless they have powerful crits or they have map modifiers, uh, which should be a huge defensive layer to the build. Um, so I'm really happy about that. And it's actually really easy to craft. All I did is get yourself a shape belt and spam craft with literally whatever you want. Don't pick lightning modifier because there are a lot of lightning modifiers on shaped affixes. When you get a tier one of extra damage from crit and tier one monorate, I got T2, so I'm taking it. Um, you can pretty much just force the resistances or anything else. Alternatively, you need the mono recovery rate because you can use the tier two seed to force a crit modifier. And I believe this is the only crit modifier on a shape belt. So you automatically will get it if you leave the prefix open. That pretty much covers everything I can talk about now. I can't really talk about corruptions and stuff. Like I said, this is SSF and I'm being realistic with what I have. So I'm just trying to pull knowledge out of what I remember. It has, you know, has been a while since I've really immersed myself in Path of Exile. And I'm having a really great time. So I'm pretty excited. I uh, got that 31k Parandas coins. We got a Shavs. It's not actually six link. That's my other piece of gear that I have. We found so much stuff. I'm trying to figure out what to do with all of it. Um, I got a Combs Heart as well, along with the Shavs, three Heretics Veils. Got a lot of shit. Uh, and then I think the other one that we still might make a build around, I do have these gloves. And just for you, YouTube, I will vol them one more time, but it could be bad. I feel like it's gonna break. Oh my god, nothing happened to it. Fuck me, that's like 17 vol orbs we've put into it. Okay, anyway, that's about it. YouTube, hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Uh, remember, if you liked the video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget, you can catch me streaming live every day but Sunday on twitch.tv slash pox. Hope you guys are having a great time with the RF character. See you guys tomorrow.